The scrap is delivered by lorry, but mostly by ship. Most of the small scrap barges are family businesses. The ship is their home. They collect the scrap in the provinces and transport it to the steel company. During the Chinese New Year celebration, these small companies go on holiday. Captain Ju also delivers scrap with his ship. He has already delivered his cargo. Now he goes to one of the islands outside Shanghai in the Yangtze Delta to collect fresh goods. He has been working on barges for more than 30 years. He has personally experienced the ups and downs of Chinese politics. The economic reforms began in the 80s and 90s. The reforms have finally given us the opportunity to work independently. A colleague and I then bought the ship ourselves. We have turned from a collective to a proper private company. This time, Captain Ju gets very high quality scrap. But still, the ship does not make him rich. Of the 1,000 euros that he can earn per month, he needs one half for the ship. The rest he shares with his partner. That leaves just over 200 euros for himself. That is enough to feed his family. Today, small private businesses like that of the scrap captain contribute a great deal to the economic power of China. At that time, I thought, now we have a completely new political power. If I buy a ship now, I am responsible for myself. When I work a lot, I can earn more and my life gets better. That is how I imagined it. <laughs> the economic changes of the past two decades were most profitable for the towns on China's east coast. Most of all for Shanghai. Thousands of multi-story buildings were built here in the past 10 years. Everything old is pulled down and rebuilt. There is no end in sight for the building boom. In many Western Chinese provinces, the economic revival has yet to materialize. In China, the gap between rich and poor is getting bigger. Millions of people therefore move from the rural areas to the rich east. Five kilometers from the tower blocks of the Shanghai Commercial Center, fisherman Pei is at work. Drive over there. Mr. Pei is not after fish. He fishes for scrap. Every day his cousin takes him to the Huang Pu in his little wooden boat. There Mr. Pei casts his magnet. The fisherman and his cousin together with their wives arrived from the poorer province of Anhui, further inland, to make their fortune in the east. Nothing stuck. I arrived in Shanghai seven years ago to fish for eels. But now there are almost no eels here anymore. That is why I stopped fishing and started collecting scrap. On a good day, I can catch 50 kilograms. On a bad day, it's only five kilograms. Pei can sell one kilogram of scrap for two yuan, about 20 cents. So he makes about 80 euros per month. Pei's magnet would be able to hoist up to 200 kilograms, but it is usually only small metal parts that are thrown into the river during ship repair works. We do it early in the morning, at lunchtime and late at night, whenever the police is not working. When they work, we stop because it is not really allowed. Pei and his cousin often fish late at night when there is the least risk of getting caught. For their work to be worth it, they have to make quite a big catch this evening. Back with barge captain Ju. His ship is fully loaded by now. Together with other scrap transporters, he is just waiting for the lock to open so that he can set off. There is a lot of competition in his business. The return is low. Sometimes he thinks about whether this line of work is still worth doing. 
Of course, it is very difficult to drive such a ship at my age. If there was another option, I would like to do it, but it is my trade after all. I have been doing it for decades already. And I also believe that if politics continues the way it is now, then we here in China have a bright future ahead of us. The lock is open. Captain Zhu sets off with his cargo of scrap. He has a day's journey upstream the Yangtze River ahead of him. This is one of the most fertile regions in China. Here, every spare square meter is used for intense agriculture. Only a fraction of China's area is suitable for the cultivation of grain and rice at all, too little for its 1.3 billion inhabitants. The People's Republic already has to import a lot of grain, but industrialization is flourishing, particularly along the banks of the Yangtze River. Today, an enormous number of industrial parks, power stations and docks gather along the last 300 kilometers to the mouth of the river near Shanghai. China is investing a lot to improve infrastructure. Soon, you will never be further than 20 kilometers away from a motorway. That way, more and more arable land disappears under reinforced concrete. Back with scrap fisherman Pei in Shanghai. He has had enough for today. It was a miserable catch, like so often recently. Pei and his cousin are not officially registered in Shanghai and therefore have no social security at all. It is still almost impossible in China to become registered anywhere other than your hometown. But because there is a lot of unemployment in many provinces and the peasants' income is minimal, Millions move to the richer cities nonetheless. There, they are tolerated as cheap laborers for economic growth. Boats are all over the river now. A few years ago, there were no ships here at all. There are a few ships that collect what we have fished out of the water. They take the scrap to the steel factories and sell it on. They are the middlemen. <laughs> Mr. Pei and his cousin want to know what their colleagues have managed to collect and stop by a middleman. Unfortunately, there is less and less scrap around. All those who used to fish for eel are now coming here to fish for scrap. Soon, there will be no scrap at all in the water. A box full of rusty pieces of metal. That is the catch of the many scrap fishermen today. Pei and his cousin drive home. Some have given up already and returned home. They only come here when it's eel season. But there is less and less to catch. When there is no more scrap, then we just have to find work on dry land. Soon there will be no more work on the water. Mr. Pei does not just have to feed himself and his wife. His six-year-old son lives at home with his grandparents. He has just started school. The scrap fisherman has to pay for the school fees and meals. For the Chinese, a good education has top priority. Every year he tries to send a few hundred euros home. Often, it is half of what he earns. His cousin had a son just under a year ago. For as long as he is not at school yet, he can live with him on the ship. Then the child has to go back home. In Shanghai, the school fees would be much higher because their son is not officially registered. Too much for the scrap fishermen. The 
highest television tower in Asia, the most modern airport in China, the Trans Rapid. All that was created within the last 10 years in Shanghai alone. Much of it was built with steel from Shagan. For the 2010 World Fair, an entire district will be pulled down and built from scratch. An enormous deep sea harbor is also being built. The People's Republic is now the third largest trading nation in the world. China wants to become the economic power of the 21st century. The speed at which things change and the general optimism in China are impressive. Nobody quite knows, however, whether the country will manage the leap from the 19th into the 21st century within only a few decades. The work goes on. <laughs>